All right. Um, how's it going, everyone? This is Mark Gordon. Welcome back to another episode of WWW, the show where every single anime, we, every every single anime season, we look ahead at the upcoming anime season to see and give our first impressions on the shows uh, that I will be watching, the shows that I won't be watching, and shows that I genuinely don't care about. <clears throat> I've got pulled up here, uh, oops, let me go back, the winter 2022 season combined TV show and TV short. Could be looking at uh, everything, actually. It's not as much as I would expect there to be, but a good amount. I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to go all the way to the top. Uh, I think it's going to be fun. So first we have uh, this, Lucky Star or something. Uh, it's a sequel to uh, whatever this is. Never heard of it in my life. It's a, apparently music comedy TV short, I think. Yeah. Um, it's like the, the first season was, I believe, 50 episodes, three minutes each. Uh, yeah, I don't give a shit about this. There's uh, never heard of it. I never will watch it. And that's that. Next is... <laughs> Next seasons. Um... Certified banger, I think. Uh, very underrated. We got Ninjala. It is based off of the video game of the same name, which recently did a crossover with Demon Slayer. If, uh, if you don't remember that, that was a huge hit. Lots of people loved it. As you can tell, lots of people planning on watching this. Um, there is actually a um, apparently a relation with this ninjala cartoon anime <laughs> i'm uh, not sure what this is um the ratings were not good 53 percent um and so as much as i do really oops love ninjala i think hmm, you know i think i might give this one a try i think i might i'll give it an episode at least and uh we'll see how that goes Excited to planning. Uh, I'm kind of excited for this. I uh, can't wait to uh, start one episode of it and then probably drop it immediately. It'll be fun. Next is On Air Dekinai. Let's see what this is. The story takes place in 2014. Follows Mafuneko, a new hire at the Tokyo Hajiko Television Company. It follows the hard struggles behind the scenes at making television content. So it's a comedy from these these studios that i've never heard of before uh honestly not the worst character design i've ever seen for this main character here um gonna go ahead and move on from this one it doesn't interest me at all there's nothing here there's nothing to look at here next is oh boy this Atasha Kawajiri Kodama Dayo, Dangerous Life Hacker no Tadareta Seikats. Um, there is no uh, English translation for the title. Wait, I have an idea. I'm Kawajiri Kodama, Dangerous. Uh, <laughs> yep, very excited for this show. Um, it depicts the lazy, unhealthy life of Kawajiri who loves alcohol and anything greasy, salty. Honestly, dude, that's super relatable. Oh, dude, look, look at the cast. One cast member, and it's Aoi Yuki. Okay, um, TV short. You know what? You know what? I think I'm uh, gonna check this out. The uh, premise very simple, very relatable. Um, the cast 100% good. Uh, staff. Oh, it's just, it's just like a, oh, I see. It's like a biography kind of thing. That's cute. Yeah, I'll watch it. For sure, for sure. I think this will be, uh, I think it'll be fine. What can go wrong, right? Next, Sabiro no Armor Daimei. Um, 
anime adaptation of Rusted Armors, a multimedia project that first started with a stage play in a manga adaptation. A stage play? Okay. The project focuses on the relationship between the gun-toting Magoichi, who is the leader of the Saika, Saika Iki mercenary group, and the Sengoku-era warlord Oda Nobunaga. Dude. What? It's an adaptation of a stage play. It's just a TV show from this studio. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, gonna go ahead and uh, skip this one and never think about it ever again. Next up is Sayuki Reload Zeroing. Adaptation of even a worm story arc of something that I've never heard of and don't care about. Okay. Um, lead in films, alright. I've actually heard of them. <laughs> But uh, unfortunately, it's a relation to something that I haven't seen and don't ever plan on seeing. So it's going to be a skip for me. Uh, next line, we've got uh, some Conan stuff. Uh, Wild Police Story. It's a uh, some kind of spinoff of Mr. Conan, as it's, as it's called. Um... I uh, have never ever seen an episode of uh, Detective Conan, never plan on it, and so uh, the spinoff is something that I will not be watching, unfortunately. Sorry, Detective Conan fans. Uh, let's see, Genso Sangoku Shi Tengen Reishinki. The story is set in ancient China during the Three Kingdoms era, when various powerful warlords began maneuvering to conquer the known realms. After it was wiped out in unforeseen circumstances, the sixth unit has been reassembled with members from diverse troubled pasts. The leader and seal practitioner Oki, the spirit purifier Shun Kyo Taken, and the demon slayer Shorei. Demon Slayer? Dude! Is this a. Uh... Alright, still. So, okay. Anyway, Demon Slayer? Let's see. Relation Demon Slayer? No! What the heck? From, let's see, Geek Toys Studio? What does that mean? Data Live. Have I seen anything from them? <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna watch this. No, sir. Mm -mm. The Demon Slayer meme isn't enough to get me to watch this. Um, let me, uh. My computer's kind of shitting itself right now. Next up is Q. Which I apparently planned to watch, planned to watch before. Let's take a look at it. Based on an idle training mobile game produced by Libra Entertainment and Pony Canyon. So it's an idle show, which means it's a fucking idle show. Grafinka Studio. If you haven't heard of them, they've been producing lots of bangers recently. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um. I like. I'm gonna. I'm gonna watch an episode of this. I'll watch one episode. You know, actually, I think I talked about this before. Um, since uh, Pride of Orange Reacts is doing so well, uh, I considered this being the next one for next season. Because I want to I wanna have one show that I do that with, you know, again, because it's fun. And this might be the one. That's why it's on my planning list, actually. And uh, I know that there, there are people who will be watching this, whom I, from, whom I am friends with. And, uh, you know, the characters aren't that bad, I have to say. There was one that I kind of really liked her design. This one, I think it was. Um, if it'll load here. Let's see. Yeah, that's a cute design. I like it. Um, I'm gonna give it a chance. I'll probably end up dropping it. Well, no. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Mugcord reacts. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. Keep stay tuned. Uh, next. What is this? Gaijin Kaihatsubu no Kuritsu-san. Uh, Kuroitsu is an assistant researcher in the Superhuman Research and Development Department of Agastya. A villainous secret organization that battles with heroes who try to save the world. 
Kuroitsu lives a busy life in Ag- what is Agastya, caught between the absurd requests of her bosses, making presentations, implementing new features into superhumans, and getting results within the allotted time, budget, and spec requests, all without vacation. Um, it is from ABC Animation. Who? <laughs> what? Uh, it, also, it is Kuritsu san from the Monster Development Department. Uh, comedy fantasy. Not really uh, striking my interest at all, even a little bit. Uh, I don't see any reason that this would be a good show to watch at all. Nothing nothing good about this, I think. That's going to be a skip from me, dog. Next. Tribe 9. Tribe 9. Oh, okay. Haro Shirogane is a weak-minded person who is constantly bullied, while Taiga has traveled from across the sea in hopes of becoming the strongest man in the world. One night, the two meet up with Shun Kamiya, the strongest XB extreme baseball player and leader of the Minato tribe. When they meet, each of the tribes scattered throughout Neo-Tokyo are about to face a major threat. On the orders of the king of Neo-Tokyo, Hotenshin, the Chiyoda tribe, led by the mysterious Ojiro Otori, has started to take control of all the tribes in the country. The evil clutches are about to reach the Minato tribe. I feel like I watched a trailer for this. It is from... Uh... Dude, why won't it load? Hello? This guy. You know this guy. He did uh, Danganronpa, Akudama Drive. Um, oh boy, I really wish uh, I could load pages faster. <laughs> I might actually give this a try. It is from Leading Films, which, you know, Leading Films. As you can see, Leading films. They've done a lot of big stuff. A lot of stuff that I've heard of. They also did Berserk. So, uh, you know, you know, you never know. Uh, not a favorite studio of mine, but they've done stuff that some people enjoy, like Tokyo Revengers. Um, uh, I'm trying to think if I actually want to give this a shot or not. Because part of me does, but then a part of me also looks at this character and it's just like, what? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Um, fuck, dude. I'll give it an episode. I will give it an episode. Maybe it'll surprise me. Although I doubt it. But maybe. It's, uh, genres? Action sports. All right. Whatever. Who cares? Ramen's Club. I did see... This is the badminton one, I think. I saw a trailer for it on Twitter a few weeks ago. And it looked fine. You know? Uh, centers on Mikoto Shiratori, a child of prodigy at badminton, but who never recovered from a major loss during a high school competition. Now he works in the sales department of the Sunlight Beverage Company, playing badminton on the side. Uh, I kind of like the art style that we see here in the uh, promotional image or whatever, as well as on the characters here. Uh, what studio is this? Lead in Films again. Okay. Um, so maybe. I don't know. It's it's just sports anime. There's no other genres right now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It It's original. So, there's nothing really to go off of, I guess. <coughs> yeah, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it an episode. We'll see what happens. I probably won't watch too much of it because... Uh, sports... Mid-sports anime generally don't really interest me, but... You never know. Maybe it won't be mid. Oh, there we go. Finally. It loaded. See, it's not bad. I kind of like the art style. At 
everyone. Us. All right, next. Futsal boys. What? What is this? The franchise's story is set in a world over a decade after futsal has skyrocketed in global popularity. Protagonist Haru Yamato watches the championship of the U18 World Cup and is inspired by a Japanese player named Tokinari Tenoji. He joins the Koyo Academy High School futsal team with the goal of becoming a player like Tenoji. There he finds friends and together, together they face their rivals. Now, is this a thing that I just don't know what it is? Or is this a real thing? Because based on the fucking uh, description here, they're treating it like it's a real thing. Do I just not know what this is? What the fuck? Is this a real sport? Huh? Futsal. Futsal, futsal, futsal. It's a football-based game, variation of mini football, played on a hard court smaller than a football pitch and mainly indoors. What? It's real somehow? Man, there's so many weird sports out there that I've never heard of. Um... Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and skip this one. If, like, I don't know this studio, Dio Medea. It'd be cool if any list would load. Oh, nice. Um, oh, they did a. Oh, okay. I have heard of them. I just didn't recognize the name. Okay. Gonna, oops, yeah, gonna skip that one though, because I don't give a shit about a sport that I've never heard of by an animation studio that I didn't even remember from nobody that I've ever heard of. You know, it's just one of those that I don't give a shit about. Next up is Hakozume Koban Joshino Gyakushu. As you can see here. Female police officer Kawai had enough of a career. She wasn't even into that in about was to hand registration when the unthinkable happened. She met the new female director of her station. And after spending a little time with this gorgeous role model, Kawai realizes that maybe she isn't quite being an officer after all. All right. Awesome, dude. Madhouse? Police? I mean, as much as I hate the fucking police. Madhouse sounds a little good. Uh, people that I've heard of in the characters section, you'll love to see that. Um, yeah, I'm gonna watch this one. If it ends up being like a good show, maybe a little good. I think that'd be kind of fun. Police in a pod. That's cute. Comedy drama slice of life from Madhouse. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Maybe it won't be bad. Maybe it'll even be good. Guess we'll see. Uh, that could be, it could be, that could be the sleeper pick. It could also be, um, the bad pick. I, I really don't know. I have high hopes, but I will probably be let down, but I have hopes. Next, Fantasy Bishoujo Juniki Ojisan to. As you can see here, it's just, uh, Oh god, what is this? A dull old man and his handsome best friend were summoned to another Oh my god. Summoned to another world by a naked goddess. However, because of the goddess's mischief, he has turned into a peerless, beautiful girl. To get back his body, he has to go on a journey with his best friend to defeat the demon king. An old man that became a beautiful girl and a handsome old man. Let the madness filled another world journey rom com begin. Um, oops, so who's, uh, who's this? Is this someone? Is this a real person? The original creator? I don't recognize the name. Any list doesn't want to load. Um, no, they are not real. Oh wait, Charlotte Art. Fate Grand Order Anthology Comic Star Story and Art. Yeah, they're not real. 
Uh, the design of this girl actually isn't that bad, I don't think. Um, especially here. I think that's kind of cute. Unfortunately, uh, the uh, <laughs> summary is one of the worst summaries I've ever fucking read. I don't want anything to do with this at all. <laughs> Nothing about this seems seems fun. Comedy, fantasy, romance. Not gonna lie, probably my favorite isekai comedy. I'm gonna have to disagree with you knowing literally nothing about the show. All right, next. What's next? Mm -hmm -hmm. All right. Ooh, okay, character design kind of nice. Um, Tokyo 24th Ward is the name of it. Um, the Far Eastern Special Administrative Region, also known as the 24th Ward, is a man-made island that sits in Tokyo Bay. Shuta, Ron, and Koki were born and raised on the island. Their family backgrounds, preferences, and personalities are completely different, but they are childhood friends who have always stuck together. However, one incident changed their relationship forever. A year afterward, the three friends are reunited by chance at a memorial service held for the incident. All three of their phones suddenly ring simultaneously. Their friend, who is supposed to be dead, is calling, the calling and demands that they make a decision about the future. The three friends do what they believe is best to protect the 24th Ward and its inhabitants. Um, let's see. Cloverworks. Mm. Cloverworks moment. Ah, I, have I ever seen a good show from Cloverworks? I'm trying to think. I've seen shows that I thought were going to be good from Cloverworks and then turned out to be, you know, not really good. Um, you know... You know, you know. Um, but I do like the art style of these character pages. I think I might give this one a go. Um, let's look at the genres and the tags here. No tags. It's an original, so we don't really know anything about it at all. Uh, we do know Survive Said the Prophet's doing the opening. Yeah, dude. You know what? Yeah, dude. I'll watch this. Sure. Plan to watch. Awesome. Slow loop. Um. So slow loop. We're like slow loading the uh, web the website because it's loading very slowly. When Hiori, a young girl whose deceased father taught her the joys of fishing, headed out to sea for some time alone, she never thought that she would encounter another girl there. After a while, this girl named Koharu and her end up fishing and cooking together, and they get to know each other a bit in the meantime. During their brief time together, Koharu finds out that the reason Hiori went out to sea that day was because she's hesitant towards meeting her new stepfamily that same evening. But what a coincidence! Koharu is also meeting her new family tonight. No, it can't be a coincidence. Follow these two sisters in their new life together. Yeah, okay. This sounds kind of cute. Um... Is this, yeah, it's from a manga. Uh, fishing, cute girls doing cute things. <laughs> Connect Studio. Who's that? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Um, I think I'm going to try this one because it sounds kind of cute. Uh, I'll be right back. I need water. Holy shit. Hold on.
That's why we're going to do a slow loop. Next up. Dolls. <coughs> Dolls front line. Um, oh man. Let's see. After the Third World War, nations devastated by biological warfare no longer have the ability to protect the wastelands. So the defense of these territories is is left to private military companies like Griffin and Kyuga, whose android soldiers or tactical dolls are tasked with fighting the rogue android army of Sangus Ferry. Now, M4A1, the indecisive but potentially capable leader of the an elite anti-rain team, must protect her comrades in a series of operations to try and regain the upper hand against Sangus Ferry. Oh man, dude. I just don't give a shit, you know? I don't care at all. Girls front line? Yeah, sure, dude. Sounds awesome. Just kidding. I don't give a shit. Fuck you. Oh, man, there's still so much. Uh, wait, that's halfway. That's halfway. All right. <laughs> Sabikui Pisco is next. Ugh. The story is set in a Japan that is ravaged by plague-like rust and details the journey of the strongest mushroom hunter Bisco Ababoshi. Akaboshi and the young doctor Milo Nekoyanagi in their search for the legendary medicinal mushroom Sabikui, believed to be the cure for the rust. What? What does that mean? Rust? Uh, that looks kind of cool. Um, Oz? Have I heard of them? It sounds familiar. <laughs> I'm pulling shit out of my ass. Um, I can't do this. This is too much for me. Wait, I have an idea. I have a really good idea. Kamichi Asabi lives out in the countryside with her family. 
She's one entrance to the prestigious Rubai Academy Middle School for girls, and now she wants only two things. To wear Is that the plot of uh, Komi-san? To make a hundred friends. Uh, I don't like the art. I'm gonna be honest. Not appealing to me. Oh, Clover works. That means uh, oh yeah, a Komi-san copy maybe. Me too. Thank you. Eye profile picture. Um. That's going to be a no from me, dog. <laughs> Don't care. Next. If you can't tell, uh, my voice hurts. And therefore... Lee Dale no Daichi Knight after being put on life support after a tragic accident. Kena Kagami's only freedom comes from SAO MMORPG Leedale. Whoa! Her life support system shuts off and Kena passes away. When she wakes up, Wait, what? she finds herself in Leedale 200 years in the future. As the high elf Kena, with lost skills but incredible stats, she must forge relationships with the residents of this new world. Which, shockingly, what? include the children, characters she designed herself. A leisurely adventure tale is about to begin, featuring a girl transported to a game world and the smile um, and the she Um, so the thing is, leisurely adventure, game. that kind of, uh, piques my interest a little bit. Um, however, isekai moment, I mean... Kadokawa is producing it. That's someone I've heard of. F just boring fucking fantasy isekai though. Like, I'm sorry, I don't. Like, I tried. There was that leisurely fucking uh, isekai not too long ago that I tried watching, the Saint's Magic Power or whatever. It was fine, but yeah, yeah, you know. I just don't care. I just do not care. So I'm going to not care about that one either. Next. This one looks like it's going to be good. I can feel it. I'm kidding. Barrow no Suretsu Richard, the ambitious third son of the House of York, believes he is cursed, <laughs> damned from birth to eternal darkness. But is it truly fate that sets him on the path to personal destruction? Or his own tormented longing? Based on an early draft of Shakespeare's Richard III, Ayakano's dark fantasy finds the man who could be king standing between worlds. Okay, that could be good. Between good and evil. I think, depending on the execution of it. Uh, but unfortunately, it's a JC staff show, which means uh, mid. That means it's going to be mid. See? The proof is in the pudding, boys. I think, though, it's an interesting enough premise. The fact that it's based on uh, an early draft of Shakespeare's fucking whatever. That's interesting. <laughs> Sounds like some real edgy protagonist shit. I, I, I could get behind it. Shoujo? Oh, nice. I like to see this. Yeah, I think I'll, uh... I think I'm gonna plan it. You know? Could surprise me. Could once again be a surprising... A sub, uh, it could be the, uh... Alright, next. I've seen a lot of stuff about this one, actually. And yet, I don't know anything about what it is. So, we're gonna find out. Orient at age 10. Best friends Musashi and Kojuru sat in excited silence as Kojuru's father spun tales of evil demons who preyed on the innocent, and the warriors who defeated them. Practicing swordplay, the two swear an oath to become the strongest in the world, but as they grow up, Kojuru turns cynical. And Musashi comes to the realization that he can't overturn 150 years of demon rule on his own. He's being called a prodigy with a pickaxe, 
and he's almost ready to settle into a life of labor. Yet he can't shake the feeling that he is still has a responsibility to act. And soon, Sounds boring. His world will force his hand. Um, ACGT, who? <laughs> uh, Kaiju Ninja Historical Demon Store Play Shonen Gore Agriculture Nudity Slapstick. Nope. I don't care. I'm not going to watch this. I swear it. Koroshi. Ai. Oh, the first episode had an early premiere at Anime NYC 2021. Should have been there. This one's a long summary. Hiroshi I, two assassins face off. The cool bounty hunter Chateau and the mysterious and powerful Ryang Ha. Chateau and Ryang Ha become enemies after this fight. At least, they should have. But for some reason, Ryang Ha takes a liking to Chateau and begins following her around. Little by little, Chateau develops a cooperative partnership with Ryang Ha, which gets her caught up in the struggle against the organizations hunting him down. Furthermore, that battle is related to her past as well. Two mismatched assassins weave together a twisted assassin x assassin thriller. I'm intrigued, honestly. Um, the whole like bounty hunter assassin type stuff, it it uh, interests me. Um, the fact that it's a uh, male and a female, that's a bit cringe, but you know, it could still be good. Um, it's from Platinum Vision. Have they done anything that I've heard of? Let's find out. Um, I've heard of some of this stuff, but I have not watched any of it, so I don't know. I think I'm going to give this one a shot. Um, the premise seems like it could be something I could get behind. However, I'm not super hopeful about it. Um, but, you know, we'll see. That's how it be. That's just how it be. Next up. What is this? Hello? I would like to paste. Thank you. Shikakuman no I'm bored already. His strength limited by the magical crest with which he was born. Oh my god. Mithayat, the world's most powerful sage. Besides reincarnation as necessary to become the strongest of all. Upon his rebirth as a young boy, Matthias is thrilled to discover he's been born with the optimal crest for magical combat on his first try. Unfortunately, the world he's been born into has abysmally poor standards when it comes to magic, and everyone thinks he's still marked for failure. Now it's up to Matthias. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So you're telling me that there's an upcoming fantasy isekai done by JC Staff that's going to be mid as fuck? Yet another one? I've never been so excited in my entire life. It's even got the female harem tag. Oh, my kind of shit for sure. Uh, where am I? Um, ooh, okay. I kind of like these two characters in the header here. Let's see what it's about. Tensai Oji no Akaji Koka Seisei Jin. Oh, wait, I've heard of this. this. Small and weak kingdom strives for only one thing selling out his country and living a quiet life in leisure. Sadly, the greatest obstacle he will ever face is his own genius I've heard of this. as he achieves ever greater accomplishments. He earns more and more favor with the people of his kingdom, which makes fulfilling his own dreams. Um, I wasn't paying attention harder. at all because I was thinking about the fact that I've heard of this. Anyway, um, doesn't look good enough to give it a shot. <laughs> uh, fantasy. Oh boy, big female harem tag. I'm not really into that. 
Uh, let me know if it's good. I'm not going to be watching it, though. Next up. Awesome name. Tenja going by the name Dunbar. He's known across the land of this virtual world. <coughs> but one night before bed, Kagami uses an in-game vanity case that's about to expire, opting to create his ideal version of a female Dunbar avatar for fun. Waking up, he's surprised to find that he's now in the body of the avatar he created the night before, and he'll have to work his way from the bottom up. So he's a young dude playing an old dude who is now playing a young girl. Ugh, that sounds so dude. ridiculously boring. Oh my god. I have nothing to say. Alright, wait. This next one, I actually am uh, hopeful for. Let's, uh, let's see what Google Translate Lady has to say. Sasaki to Miyano Me too. Miyano spends his days peacefully reading boys' love comics and worrying about how girly his face is until a chance encounter leads to a scuffle with his senior Sasaki. Intrigued by his feisty junior Miyano, delinquent Sasaki if gay, uses then every good. opportunity he can to if get not, closer. Then likely extremely boring. Oh wait, dude. Dude. It's given, but without the music? Oh. Worst given. I'm excited for that. Am I excited for that? <laughs> Studio Dean. Uh, maybe. It could be good. However, uh, it could also be very mid. We'll see, though. Boys love... Uh, maybe it'll be good. I'm running out of things to say. I'm tired. Karakai Jozu no Takagi San 3. I haven't seen the first one. I haven't seen the first two. No so uh, I know. Whoops, sorry about that. Genjutsu Shugi Yusha no Okoku Saikenki Part 2 The second part of Genjutsu Shugi Yusha no Okoku Princess Connect 3 Dive Season 2 The second season of Princess Also Connect. haven't seen that 3 Dive Now what the fuck is this and why is it so high up on the popularity list Is this something that I should know Another Cloverworks show what are they doing Why are they doing so much They already can't handle doing the stuff that they've been doing I don't know why they're 
Come on, Cloverworks. Sono bisque doll wa koi wo suru traumatized by a childhood incident with a friend who took exception to traditional dolls. Doll artisan hopeful Gojo Wakana passes his days as a loner. Finding solace in the home EC room at his high school. To Wakana, people like beautiful Kitagawa Marin, a trendy girl who's always surrounded by a throng of friends is practically an alien from another world. But when cheerful Marin, never one to be shy, spots Wakana sewing away one day after school. She barges in with the aim of roping her quiet classmate into her secret hobby, cosplay. Will Wakana's wounded heart be able to handle what? the invasion from this sexy alien? <laughs> Comedy, etchy, romance, slice of life. Sounds awful. It has a high heterosexual tag. Sounds even worse. Um, I gotta know what it's all about. I gotta see why people are so uh, interested in this. It seems popular. Lots of people are planning it. I'll try it. Although, this is actually the first time I've ever fucking heard of this. I think. My dress up darling. Yeah, I haven't heard of this. Um, it'll probably be really bad, and I'll probably drop it after an episode, but maybe. Manitas, no carte. I actually watched like half of the first season of this. Um, or the first core, I guess. And then it was boring, and so I dropped it. Why am I even doing this? It's not funny. Alright, next. Man, there's not a lot this season, is there? Holy fuck. This is in top three? What even is this? It looks bad. It looks really bad, I'm not gonna lie. Alright, let's... Shuematsu no harem the time is near future Tokyo, <coughs> Japan in 2040. Reito, a young man suffering from an intractable disease. Hello? Okay. What the fuck? Vows to reunite with his childhood friend Arisa and decides to cold sleep to cure her illness. When he wakes up five years later, the world was undergoing a major transformation. The MK male killer virus kills 99.9% .9 of men on the planet. The ground is with five That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever million. heard. Why would anyone want to watch that? Hello? This sounds awful and stupid. And really dumb and bad. Second season of a thing that I haven't seen. Final season, part two of a thing that I have seen and am going to be watching. And I'm excited for it. It's already on my planning list. Yeah, awesome. That's it. So, in total, we've got... Oops. Oh. Oh, come on, load. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 15. Holy shit. Although, probably most of these I will watch one episode and then drop immediately. Um, if I had to decide on a show that I think is going to be the big sleeper. Sleeper pick. For the season. I have two options, I think. One is this one. The, uh, the the police one. And the other is the this one. The Aoyuki one. The TV short. Those are my two that I think... Maybe. The one that I'm only purely watching for the meme. Hinjala. And Attack on Titan. Uh, man. I can't 
can't believe I actually fucking did this. What's wrong with me?